श्रीराघवम दशरथात्मज Sairam and welcome once again to Prashanti Chronicles. I am standing right in front of the grand northern gate of Sai Kulwant Hall, Prashanti Nilayam. Anyone who steps into the divine presence of Bhagwan through this gate first bows down to Sri Rama, Sri Lakshmana, and Mother Sita. And Swami has installed here two Hanumans. No. there are actually three hanumans so when did bhagwan gift us these icons of adoration and what is the significance behind these installations come let's discover while every stone and statue every tree and temple in prashanti has been placed here by the divine master plan still for every facet of this plan to unfold the lord picks his instruments and the chosen instrument for this sacred shrine was shri subramanya chettiar who came to bhagwan way back in 1944 when bhagwan was just 18 the very first sight of bhagwan sealed his faith and since then there was no looking back in his deep devotion to swami but in 1983 sri chettiar went through a painful personal tragedy he tried many ways to overcome that intense pain but what helped him the most to get over this terrible sorrow in his heart was the incessant chanting and writing of the name om sai ram this filled his heart with so much peace not only peace but also filled his life with abundance and that is when shri chettiar thought how nice it would be if everyone benefited from this practice if only everyone took to chanting and writing of the name their lives too would be filled with peace and prosperity thus as divinely ordained the dissemination of this practice became his life sadhana and that's when shri chettiar took bhagwan's permission and blessings and formed the shri sai rama koti nama likhita yagna committee so this committee distributed rule notebooks which had adequate space to write om sai ram and gave them away free of cost to anyone and everyone soon many people took to it with discipline and devotion and the joy and peace they derived from it only kept them going to complete more and more number of books thus transforming this practice into an elevating movement the committee started receiving thousands of such completed books all of them were neatly packed in yellow cloth and not only carefully preserved but also offered worship every day besides on the 23rd of every month they did sai sahasranama archana chanting of 1008 names of bhagwan and did narayan seva serving food to the needy when the committee had accumulated tons of such books shri chettiar then prayed to bhagwan to accept this offering of likhita japa the ceremonial writing of om sai ram om sai ram even though everything is orchestrated by the divine will still everything materializes with time through prayer thus bhagwan graciously consented to his prayer and the first such ceremony happened in 1983 when 9 crores of written names 
were submitted at his divine lotus feet. Swami blessed all these devotees profusely and this infused them with divine energy and propelled them to continue the sadhana with added zeal. By 1986, nine crores of names became 60 crores of names offered to Bhagwan. And now the committee resolved to strive for the lofty target of 108 crores of Sai Nama to be offered to Sai Rama. This sadhana now went international. Seekers were no more restricted to Tamil Nadu or South India. Devotees from all over the globe participated in this holy endeavor. And in 1995, by divine grace, the committee did achieve the target of 108 crores of names written of Bhagwan. Deeply humble, Sri Chatiyar prayerfully requested Bhagwan's permission to organize a grand event to commemorate the occasion. Bhagwan consented for it. Encouraged by Swami's response, Sri Chatiyar again prayed, Swami, can we install a statue to mark the moment? Swami smiled and he welcomed the idea. And then he kept quiet for a while and then said, No one knows the efficacy of Rama's name more than Hanuman. Hanuman alone knows the power of Rama's name and the glory of holding on to Rama's feet. So make a statue of Hanuman. Sri Chatiyar immediately asked Swami, what kind of material should we use to make the statue? Make it in marble, came Bhagwan's direction. Swami, what should be the posture of this Hanuman? Swami said, this Hanuman should be different. This one should be a bhajan Hanuman. Hanuman lost in contemplation of Rama's name. Bhagwan actually physically demonstrated the posture of Hanuman and said, his one hand should be up and the other hand down, both as if holding symbols and singing the name of Rama. Bhagwan, in fact, immediately gave the date for the installation of this Hanuman and said, this should be ready and installed on August 31st. 1995. In fact, the very next day, Bhagwan revealed to the teachers of his university and school that he is going to construct an underground vault in front of the Sai Kulwant Hall. And that is where he is going to treasure the 108 crores of names written so devotedly by the devotees. What many may not know is that when Sai Kulwant Hall was inaugurated by Bhagwan in July 1995, it was one third of its current dimensions. This whole area was actually outside the gate of the Sai Kulwant Hall. Originally, the gate of the Sai Kulwant Hall was where the Suprabhatam bell currently is. Later on, Swami extended the hall successively in two stages till it merged with these sacred installations. So the instruction from Swami to Chetiyar came in June 1995. He had just three months to make the statue. Meanwhile, in Prashanti, the construction of the underground vault started. Sri Chetiyar wanted to leave no stone unturned to make this a grand event. Nearly 5,000 people came from Madurai in the last week of August and there was a yagnam conducted in one of the halls in Prashanta Nilayam for three days and thousands participated in this yagnam where the bhajan Hanuman was worshipped. On August 30th, the Purnahuti of this yagnam happened and now everything was set for the installation of bhajan Hanuman the next day, August 31st, 1995 was the most sacred Shukla Panchami day. In the auspicious morning hours, Bhagwan's Bhajan Hanuman was brought in a grand procession from the Yagnam Hall amidst bhajans and Vedic chants. The devotees circumambulated the Sanctum Sanctorum of Prashanti Mandir three times and then assembled here, waiting for Bhagwan. At the appointed time, 
Swami arrived and himself placed the first bundle of the Likita Japam sadhana into this underground vault. And then, slowly, this space was filled up by devotees with all these hallowed yellow bundles of sacred love. In fact, on this day, it was not just 108 crore names that were placed inside. It was actually 700 crore names as many more people from Andhra and many other states sent in their sadhana of Likita Japa. It was indeed a fitting tribute to Bhagwan in the year of his 70th birthday. After all these pearls of devotion were placed inside, the door of this vault was closed forever. It is on top of this holiest of holy walls that Bhagwan installed the blissful Bhajan Hanuman. As bhajans and vedam were going on in full vigor, Bhagwan poured into this sacred pit gold, silver, diamonds, navaratna, vermilion, kumkum, yellow rice and all the holy items and then he placed a sacred yantra, a mystical copper plate which was worshipped for 48 days. After Bhagwan had installed the yantra, Swami most benignly gently pushed the Hanuman to its designated spot. And Swami did not stop with that. Swami then came down the pedestal and from far saw the position of Bhajan Hanuman and made adjustments. From then on, this marvelous Bhajan Hanuman in marble not only became the custodian of these 700 crore names of his Lord, but also shone as an eternal inspiration for everyone entering the sacred presence of Sai Kulwant Hall to forget the world and hold on to the name. What is also significant is that Bhagwan later revealed that it is Hanuman alone who can withstand the powerful vibrations constantly emanating from this spiritually vibrant vault. This entire ambience, the trees and pillars, the bricks and the flowers here reverberate with the sweetness of his name. Truly, we have no idea of the impact Namasmarana can have not only on us, but on everyone and everything around us. Maybe to emphasize and awaken us to this fact that Bhagwan did not stop with the installation of this Bhajan Hanuman outside the Sai Kulwant Hall. He installed another inside the Sanctum Sanctorum of Prashantinilam too. That indeed is the most consecrated place which saw the origins and the blossoming of the Sai Bhajan movement right from the 1950s. While the marble Bhajan Hanuman was gifted to us in August 1995, Bhagwan directed Sri Chetiyar to do a silver Bhajan Hanuman in the same posture. And this silver Hanuman was placed right next to Bhagwan's throne in the innermost shrine of Prashanti Mandir on October 14th, 1995. This was done as part of the Sri Sai Paduka Pratishta Mahotsav that used to be held every year in the 90s. On that momentous day, Bhagwan even delivered a special discourse glorifying Hanuman. Just like Ramanama, 
helped the Vanara Sena to cross the ocean in the Ramayana. It is Sai Ramanama which will help each one of us to cross our ocean of depressions and delights. The Bhajan Hanuman installations are indeed symbolic. As we enter the Sai Kulant Hall every day, it is as if Bhagwan is telling us, I want you to be like this. Can you reach this exalted state? Lord Hanuman is here to inspire us, ignite us and elevate us so that we too can suffuse ourselves with that seraphic joy of singing his name and rising to that ethereal plane of constant ecstasy of his presence. So that's the story of the Bhajan Hanuman. But how did the Rama Parivar, Sri Rama, Sri Lakshmana and Mother Sita come to be here? That's coming up in another episode of Prashanti Chronicles. Till then, thank you so much. Jai Hanuman, Jai Sri Ram, Jai Sai Ram.